Hey everyone, I'm Jim T. Graham with rcgroups.com and I'm super stoked to talk to Kike Zomanzini. Zomanzini, I think I said it right both times. Uh, yeah. Kike is the godfather of 3D. He's the founder of Flex Innovations and I'm sure I've said this, but not lately. The uh, when, the first time I went in a hobby shop, I was I didn't know what to buy. I was walking up and down. This is a long time ago. This predates uh, YouTube for sure. And the only thing you could really watch were VHS tapes. And uh, there was a VHS tape. It just happened to be in front of me on the counter. I said, I'll buy this, put it on the deck. Never heard of anyone. I didn't know anything about the hobby. I went home, put it in my VCR, which was, you know, big. And uh, there was a guy flying around a horse track and he was doing... uh, I, I, you're ha- doing a Harrier and sort of a hover and you're doing a Harrier rolls, I think in my memory. And it turns out it was Kike. And really that is what made me decide. Yes. I really want to fly RC. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Do you remember uh, that VHS or flying at this horse track? Yes. I, the- I, I think that's back in uh, Costa Rica. Yeah. And back in uh, 1997, probably. That's the okay. year you're, you're talking that makes about. Sense. And uh, yeah, it's good to see you, Jim. Yes, sir. So we're here for a reason. Today is the release day of the Twin Otter, which everybody's been talking about on the forum. Have you seen those pictures? I saw it on at uh, Joe Nall. Yeah, here's a picture of it. But today is the day they can really learn about it, right? Yes, yes. Uh, today we we decide to um, open for uh, pre-orders and the airplane is pretty advanced in as far as, you know, production goes. We feel pretty good about the product itself. So we decide today uh, to make the day. Um, as many of you have seen the airplane uh, in videos, uh, the ones that were present that uh, John Noll also saw in flight. And so we are very excited about the airplane. We think it brings a lot of uh, innovation and uh, as far, you know, the flying characteristic the airplane has. Many twin other has been done in the hobby for many different companies, but I don't think any uh, twin other has been done in the way that we have interpreted. Um, we thought to have an airplane that it looks uh, scale. It has a scale a- appeal. For most part, it's pretty scale. There are some modifications and things that are different to the scale, but the presence of scale is there. And so we thought to have an airplane that will do all the stall flying, like the twin otter is capable, and add to that a twist um, that will make it capable to do really fun aerobatic, kind of aerobatic not seen yet with a, a twin prop kind of airplane. And so, yeah, that's the twin other. We have, a um, um, you know, two different versions too. One is a day uh, version and then the night version with the LED, LEDs inside like we always do in our airplanes. Uh, Super PMP uh, with the Aura 8, uh, which is one of the very, very important elements in this uh, design. Um, you know, I don't know if you want me to go more in detail of the airplane or if you have a question. Um, you know, Jim, I could, I could talk for uh, many minutes about the airplane. You know, it's something I'm excited and it was created from nothing. And so I cannot wait to, you know, share more with people about information on the airplane. And most important is have people flying the airplane. I think they will and get really excited. But if you have a question, you please do so. If not, I can continue a little bit talking about the airplane. Well, let's do this. Let's uh, go over the specs. The photos kind of illustrated this, but it's uh, 74.25 inches long with a 90 inch wingspan. So it's definitely large. Yeah, yeah. It's a big airplane and you know, it's EPO, it's foam, you know, it's not a balsa plane. So for a foam airplane, it's Pretty big uh, size. Eight channels. And I think what we should do next is watch a video of how 3D capable it is. Yeah. Yeah, this video um, 
uh, you know, we did it here in our field. It was a day where it was blowing around 20 miles per hour. And so it's fun to see the airplane, how well it flies under that condition. And this is one of the maneuvers it's capable to do. Oh, wow. It's, that is using, you know, the thrust vector. So basically you apply it rather, you're gonna see it right. again, apply it rather and one model gets more RPM and the other one kind of reduce RPM and get that effect. The good thing is that it's a very easy thing to do. Don't think it's gonna be a lot of work. Just stick in one direction on the rudder and watch. And that's what I think is gonna be a fun airplane because everything you see here, it's a, you know, very, very predictable. It's not going to bite you. It's a very, very friendly airplane great sport airplane. Uh, I think that's kind of the main core. This is not meant to do 3D aerobatic only. It's just to have fun, you know? It, it can and do I everything. That's I see it has form. flaps engaged. Are you, you utilizing the flaps and these 3D-like maneuvers? Yeah, and some maneuvers, like in this case, the waterfall, because the flaps are uh, close to the prop, and when you drop it, and uh, the flap will give kind of a pitch effect a little bit negative pitch effect. And it helps to do like in that case, that waterfall a little bit more tight. Right. Uh, but uh, that's about the only maneuver. Um, you know, here's like a flat spin kind of demonstrating the reaction of, you know, the rudder coupled to the motors, how well it respond. And, uh, you know, so it exit very clean, very stable. You never see a, you know, wobble or anything. So do you have your motors, um, coupled with your rudder? Is that how that's working? Yes, uh, of course, in the middle is Aura. Uh, the Aura, in one of the jobs there in Aura, it has multiple jobs, Aura, in this airplane. One of the jobs is coupling a rudder to the motors, and, and but also, which is equally important, you have gain coupled to the motors. So the yaw gain is coupled to the motors. So that makes um, very stable the airplane because if you're doing like a high alpha, even a turn, right, right. Um, a stall yeah. turn, the motor, it will kind of keep it really stable. Ah, so, uh, so if a wing starts to drop, yep. it's going to like power up and keep you right. flat. And you can hear when it's flying um, how the motors, like right here, I don't know if you have audio there. You can put audio and listen to the uh, motors. We have music on top of it. But you will you oh. will hear the oh. motors a little bit. But anyway, you will hear the motors kind of increasing, decreasing RPM. That and is crazy. Yeah, that helps a lot for um, stability, not only doing aerobatic, it's just in the general flight. You come in for landing, you know, um, the airplane feels really solid. And one of the reasons is that. Then the other job on there in the aura is um, that I always like to talk is, is this is not only for our airplane, for this, um, sorry, for the twin otter, it's for all airplanes in general, with a very low, look at this landing. I love this landing. How, it's an elevator. how stable, look at that. It's kind of coming just like so friendly. Zero, zero rollout it, right there. Yeah, yeah. So the, I was saying the aura is so, uh, so good for, uh, the PMPs, you know, out of the box, you get all pre-programmed. So all your mixes or your uh, rates, uh, your gains, so your dual rates, everything is already uh, pre-programmed. So you imagine if this airplane will come out of the box and then the customer needs to program it to oh, get no, all these right. features, it will be right. impossible or very few people will do it. And you imagine the cost of your radio, you're looking at very high-end radio to be able to do all this, this mm -hmm. mixture. So that's the mm -hmm. that's the beauty on the Aura, especially in this, this uh, product where you have, um, you know, a lot going on. And, you know, we have some videos, um, I think we posted today with the floats, which you bring another element of, of of having fun with the airplane and relaxing, you know, the floats are are going to be great. I tested and the airplane behaves so well on floats. It's just, it's just very nice. 
And the um, floats themselves create lift of some sort, right? Yeah, like every every float airplane, it kind of give you lift. You know, of course, you have the weight that is way below the the truss right. line, and that brings sort of a pendulum kind of stability, but also at the same time, it hurts some aerobatic maneuvers because you have that big weight, you know, on sure. so far from the truss line that you know make the airplane. Not, not to fly, you know, so clean when you're doing aerobatics because you feel the weight. But for cruising around, it makes you more, flo more floater, more, more stable. Um, the floats um, are going to be uh, in a later date. They are not coming together with the airplane. We're coming a little bit behind with those. And so we expect to have the floats by the end of the year. The airplane we expect to have it very early in in the fall, um, and uh, you see in there the prices. Of course, we have our free shipping program now that is working excellent. Customers are very happy about this. And I think that's a price. pretty amazing amazing price for what you get. I don't know yeah. that I've ever seen anyone utilize uh, twin engines into a gyro to help with all these things. Yeah, I, I I don't know. Maybe there is some out there. Uh, Maybe truly, this is a an idea that was uh, sparked right here. But um, it you know, it it's also an airplane that you haven't seen. I believe it's a a a twin doing this kind of aerobatic, and and not only is the aerobatic is is the way it handles. You know. For those that owns an RVA 60 that are more, uh, there is a lot of customers out there with a RVA 60 for those owning that. So you imagine the RVA 60 flying characteristics very close to the twin order. I think the twin order is capable to fly a little bit slower than the RV8. Uh -huh. um, we, we never try side by side, but just by flying, I think it flies a little bit slower. Um, the twin other might have a little bit less top speed because it's just more wet area, you know, more, more, more mass, more, it's a little bit slower on top. But, um, I think the punch from hover or slow speed on the twins always is greater because you have more disc, you know, from the props. Right, right. So the grip is higher. Right. So accelerates very nicely. So and you get a lot more airflow over a lot more surfaces with that twin. Exactly. Engine. Exactly. That's the, the nice thing. It's like that's the other thing. It makes it so stable because with the aura we have the what we call live wing. Live wing means the flaps are also working coupled with the ailerons. Mm -hmm. So when you come in on final for landing and you have your throttle a little bit open, remember those props are blowing straight to the flaps. Right. So it it, has, it happens two things. The flaps are down. If you come in with flaps, your flaps are down. That it generates lift by itself because the propellers are blowing the flaps, right? So right. you have this Stable. called artificial lift a little bit. I call it artificial. It's true, but I call it artificial uh, lift. And then if you couple that to the light wing, which is your flaps are moving like ailerons, and also right. you have gain involved with the ailerons and the flaps. So your flaps also have a roll gain. So when you see that landing that is coming and kind of you see those wings so solid, all these factors that I explained are what you see is result of all these little things, contributions that make that flight so enjoyable and so fun, you know? So when you yeah. first came, came out with your uh, aura, it was kind of, uh, I don't know how many years ago it was, but I do know that people were really uh, debating the merits of such a thing on an RC plane. And now it's just kind of a standard issue thing that you see on a lot of airplanes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Aura is a very popular brand uh, for the mid-class, um, uh, you know, and uh, low-end class. We have the Aura 5.2. And even in the 3D gas airplanes, the Aura Pro is doing very well. Um, I think people understood um, where the focus is, and it's all about have fun, a like good time, and just just make more enjoyable and 
and just go out there and enjoy more the airplane, you know, basically. But I always say one thing, uh, Jim, that is, for me, the aura, the most important job, I call job that the aura is doing, is offering to the customer everything preset and pre-programmed. So basically, that is the number one thing. You can have the best gyro in the world, but if you don't have your airplane set up correctly, nothing works, okay? So out of the box, this airplane that you're gonna get, any of this, the twin other, the case, and other airplane, you just bind your radio. You're using a default um, factory setup from radio, which is the basics. And, you know, there is nothing, even if you have flaps and, a, you know, dual flaps or dual uh, ailerons or dual elevator and things like that, you're still using your transmitter to set up with for one aileron, one elevator, one rather, and the aura will do all the rest. And then it's a very important part of that is also all the pre-programming that we do to the airplanes. So it, you're talking about years of experience on right. how to set up. So for example, I have many customers say, I can't believe your airplane tracks so well in knife edge. Well, yes, two reasons. It's a good design, but also has been pre-programmed for you. So you have the right mixes, you know, if the airplane is coupling a little bit to the wheels, you have applies a little bit of up elevator, if it couples aileron roll-wise, it applies a little bit of, rather when you, you know, applies, uh, the, the rather applies aileron. So, and all those things you learn through competition and the years I personally learned that that way. And this is how all the pro fly, you know, they have pre-mixes and you wanted those airplanes to fly very straight. Also the rates are correctly, you know, not too touchy. You have the expos right. And all those things, you know, the flaps, your speed of the flaps is correct. The amount of mix between your flaps drop, your elevator puts, you know, adjust to keep the airplane level. All these little things that you normally will be even doing with your own transmitter to get it to fly right. But the good news here is that you open that box, you bind your transmitter to your airplane, and you receive right away all these years of experience in that little box. Right. And then on top of that, you have the gyro effect, which it will make your airplane to fly, feel like it flies bigger, more stable, right. especially if it's a windy conditions. So that is that is what I think people is understanding uh, where the big, big benefit of, of the aura is. And in the case of a twin order, you know, you get this twin with complicated uh, program that it happened before you get your box. All is done, all is complete. We worked very hard to get this going as you see in it. It's many, many, many hours of work to execute it, to come up and then get the, you know, the factory on board and, you know, get everything in happen. sync. Yeah, to happen. So you get in an airplane that is an amazing amount of, of you know, hours um, to get it to fly right. And, and I think that's the main appreciation that people over years is understanding that that's the biggest benefit um, when you have an order in this case and uh, out of the box, you know, the airplane really performs. So, and um, other thing on the order um, that I like to say is, uh, Jim, you have counter rotating props also. Okay. So you have no torque and that's important. Right, right. So, yeah, so the airplane doesn't do this or this, you know. Doesn't get off. When, right. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of locked in, and and that's important. You know, if you come in like doing a Harrier, for example, uh, you know, there's no. You're not torquing no torque. the. Yeah. And then you don't have to rudder it in to get it straight. And then you have the yaw on the motors, you know, correcting. So right. you can have this thing going around. You have to do some corrections, but very minor. And it's very fun to watch and, and, and to execute, you know. It's, it's a big plane, has very good presence. One thing I think it's important to mention because people say, oh, it's big, so how do you take it to the field? Well, mm. 
the the two wings there is two two panels right on the same on the staff so the right left and the staff as well you know with four screws we kind of hold it in place the motors and the ESCs are together in that um, motor fairing that you see in the wing that's yep. they're all together and um, from below on that I don't know if we see here now, if we have any picture here but from yeah you see the nacelle there from below you can access with a little door to the ESC so the ESC okay. is next to the motor getting really nice air and also it makes very simple the system because you have one EC3 connector going into the fuselage when you right. put the airplane in, you know, in the fuselage or the field assembly. And then those two um, ESC, one from the right and one from the left wing coming, you put a, a Y harness right there. So the airplane, it works with only one uh, battery. And the size we recommend is between 52 to 6200. This is a 6S configuration. Um, the propellers are, uh, you know, wool uh, prop, uh, our own props, uh, 14.6. And um, the ESC is a hobby wing ESC. Uh, it's a 60 amp each. And so we have two of those. Then we have a, a total of uh, six servos for the control surfaces and one a another servo for the nose wheel, because we have a steering also in the nose wheel. Um, it's very nice, the, the front of the airplane, you can remove the nose cone in the front and have access to the, um, you know, all the mounting and the servo for the nose wheel steering. Um, I think there is a picture, if you go to the page um, of the, go one back there and go to the page, I think there is one picture that shows the con and the gallery. Yeah, you're right there. Or no, below. I think it's you go lower, uh, Jim. Go lower. Scroll lower. Yeah, you will oh, see Oh, here we there. go. I totally missed this. Yeah. yeah, you see that picture there where in the nose it comes off, and that's where you kind of access to your uh, steering, you know. So oh, right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Very simple. So, and then let's yeah. look at these others while we're here. Yeah, you will see there that that's that's a good feature. You know, this airplane has a huge hatch on top where you access basically to everything there. And the battery is uh, removable. So it comes with a little plate of plywood and kind of once one screw, thumb screw, you can, you know, remove the battery very, very convenient. Um, awesome. Let's see what other picture. You can see, uh, let's see this one. That's the elevator and rudder servo. They are mounted as you see in the tail and with a little push rod, carbon fiber push rod. Uh, so it's a very direct, uh, you know, control to the control surfaces and right. get good geometry through. And, uh, Yeah, you can see the control surfaces is a Noske, okay. <laughs> but um, those and the same, the rudder and the elevator has a great amount of deflection as you see in the picture. And um, very important, not only for aerobatics, but to have that control at slow speed. Right. Over the years, I say we, all the modelers, we learn that having larger control surfaces, it really helps to control the airplane at low speed, at slow speed. And, you know, it's not about the, of course it will do more aerobatic and, um, you know, but in case of sport airplanes like, like the Twin Otter, uh, it's very important to control the airplane at slow speed. So if you come in for landing, you can have that feel of your, connected until you know right. you flare you touch down and you still having a really good connection to the airplane if you have a tiny control surfaces you lose control way below beyond uh, before and it gives you that feel of i have it or i not have it you know so right right you're connected so, yeah 
the slower, the bigger. Yeah. So ever the big news is um, today was the release, and there will be feature articles on RC Groups and Flying Giants. And at the bottom of both of these feature articles, you will be able to click right here, learn more, and jump over to Flex Innovation. And you can check out the pricing on everything and all the additional pieces and parts that you're going to need. And anything else, Kike? Um, about the twin other, um, I just want to recap uh, what I say is is probably in, in a couple words. So it's going to be it's it's a fun airplane to fly. It's an airplane that will be uh, that will offer joy to everybody you know when i say everybody means from entry to the high end because it's the flight envelope of the airplane is so great that it can do it all you know so i think if you acquire one of these airplanes the twin other night or day um you you will have a ball with it and uh, and uh, we we are pretty excited uh, for you guys to try and we work here very hard to make sure we deliver a really good product and good quality we will be checking very carefully everything and we will drive as hard as we can to get it to the date we announce a date that we feel confident about it and always there is some unknowns. Um, I'm not trying to cover myself, but that's a reality. Yeah, but I feel know. pretty good about the date. Uh, you know, that's why. And the most important, you guys need to know, we will work very hard to get this good for you. And really looking forward for you guys to fly. That's I'm pretty excited about that for sure. And we're looking at early fall of 23. Mm -hmm. I want to give a big thanks for Kike. I know he's busy today with the release, and uh, but I thought it was important for him to come out and talk to everyone on RC Groups, Flying Giants, and all the other sites just to uh, get some intel on this cool twin otter. Thank you so much, Kike. Thank you, Jim. Have a good one. You, you did great. I'm Jim T. Graham with RC Groups. Be sure and hit all the buttons down there, and we will talk to you later.